Chris, and welcome to another one of my videos. Those who are unaware, Monitor Effects is a special Reaper effects chain that will only apply to your output and it won't actually be used whenever you're rendering or bouncing anything. So that makes it really useful for putting things that you only want to be using while you're monitoring and you definitely don't want finding their way into the track. Basically, things that change the signal that you don't want to ever be bouncing or rendering. As you can see, I've got five different plugins on my monitoring effects. So let's have a look at what they are and what they do. Also, I'll have links for all of these plugins in the description as per usual. Also, I don't believe in affiliate links, so any links are direct links, and I have no commercial interest whatsoever in trying to sell you anything. This is literally what I use. So we'll start with a very simple one for the first one. So this is clipped softly from the Air Windows range. And this is purely and simply just a safety clipper to make sure that I'm never sending clipped output out my, in my case, headphones. It doesn't have any controls. It just sits there, does its job, takes up very little resources. Excellent choice for doing just that, in my opinion. We have another Air Windows plugin called Monitoring 3. So this one does have one control on it. So this is a monitoring utility. And there's a couple of things on this that I find particularly useful. Firstly, you can monitor in mono. You can do either straight mono, which just collapses to dual mono, or you can do mono lat or mono rat, which is mono, but only through one side, mono left or mono right. The other useful ones, uh, if you want to monitor just the sides, there's a side control. The other useful one is phone. So phone is one that I use if ever I'm mastering. And what it does is it basically emulates the frequency response and mononess of a cell phone speaker. So it will give you a little bit of an idea how your mix translates to that kind of a device, which is one of the things you want to know when you're mastering. Then we're on to the first of the paid plugins in the chain, and that's uh, Tone Boosters Morphit. So this is a uh, headphone uh, correction plugin. So it basically takes the frequency response of, as you can see, my headphones, and it matches it to a, a more ideal sort of curve, which is very useful. But the one thing about this one, which not all of them have and can be handy is that as well as just being able to correct you can also do a simulate so for example if you want to simulate uh, apple ipod earbuds you can choose that and it will make the mix sound like it's being played back on apple earbuds in terms of frequency response which again is another thing which is very useful when mastering to give you an idea of, okay, if someone's listening on Apple earbuds, what's it going to sound like to them, roughly? The other thing that I use Morphit for uh, is if for some reason I want to increase the, the gain of something that I'm listening to just for monitoring purposes, then I can use the gain knob on Morphit itself. But if I want to decrease the gain, then I will usually go for a different approach. So speaking of gain reduction, I've shamelessly stolen this idea from Dan Worrell, and that is using slick EQ and a special curve to do reduced volume monitoring. So you, you, this is one of those cases where you're not going to want to do this when you're mastering, generally, but if you're mixing it volumes that are a bit too loud this is a way of turning it down what actually happens is this special el curve in slick eq it actually compensates for how the ear responds differently to frequencies when it's quieter and compensates so that it should be more equivalent to what it was like if you were playing it at full volume very handy it's a feature that's only available on mastering edition of slick eq though and last but not least, we've got Dear VR Monitor. Morphit does well on the correction for headphones, so you'll notice that I've got the headphone compensation off in Dear VR Monitor plus 
they don't have my particular headphone model anyway. What it is useful for is simulating crosstalk and so on, like you would get on if you're monitoring through actual monitors rather than headphones. When I'm mastering, I'll usually have this enabled uh, and set to mix room A. That way it a better picture. And I will also usually scroll through and check some of the smaller sort of scenes, as they call them, for how it translates. So you've got car, you've got van, you've got kitchen. Because usually if you can make a mix that translates well to those smaller sort of environments, then it will usually translate well to the larger ones as well. So that's kind of it for this video. So you've noticed that I haven't certain things on here that you might expect like frequency analyzers or anything like that. And that's because I would usually have those on the master rather than monitor effects. And I'll go through those in a future video. Thank you for watching. Be interested in hearing what you have on your monitor FX chain that you'd recommend if there's something that I don't have. Drop it in the comments below and look forward to seeing you in the next video.